Hey gang, it's Mike from Power BI at Tips. Today I'd like to talk about a quick tutorial touching on what happens inside a slicer. So sometimes you'll put a slicer on a page and we'll do that here. I'll grab my product, double click on the main page here. I'm gonna type product to do my q and I'm gonna enter products here. So I'll make a quick table around products. And then I'm gonna change this to a slicer here note that we have a slicer. Now sometimes in your data models you'll find that when you bring slicers on a page often there'll be times with a blank in it and this is a function of what's happening inside the data model. In this case I have data that doesn't support one of these different product categories. So let's figure out how to fix that. First we'll move over here to our table setup. So for this scenario I've got two different tables. One table is the sales table, second table is the products table. Table on the sales table has IDs one, two, three, four, and the products table only has three items. And you can see down here below, I have products and sales linked with a one relationship on the products to a many relationship on the sales side. Okay, moving along. Now let's build this data together into a slicer and a table so you can see what's happening between the relationships. On the slicer here, I'm going to add my products and again you'll note that I have a blank here and these shirts shirts pants and shoes in the table I'll also add the products and I'll also add a sales calculation so there's many rows in this table there are many different IDs that have the sales numbers attached to them and this is doing a sum on those sales information so you'll note here I have this blank item this is because there's nothing linked between uh, a product ID that is in the sales table to the actual product table. All right, so how do we solve this? How do we get rid of that blank item? Well, if we move over here to our solution, I found a, a pretty slick solution. If you grab the slicer that you want to remove, so let's grab this one and we'll just control C, control V, copy a second one down here. And you'll note the behavior of the second slicer I've added to this page if I control click on multiple items here, the slicer, the secondary slicer is actually controlling the, the first slicer on the page, modifying the filter context of everything in the data set here. So if I only want people to select a subsect, subsect selection of all the items, I can just click two items and have those things revealed as a slicer context. Great, but I don't want two slicers on the page. So this is where we get tricky. So if I want to to select a number of items here. I'll select these three items, I'll remove all the blank items, and then I'll actually turn off the visibility. I'll go over here to the view ribbon and then make sure that the tick box for selection pane is selected here. So I'm working with the selection pane. And I'll go over here, I'll select the slicer that I want to make disappear and I'll click the little eyeball here inside the selection panel on the right side of the screen. And I'll do the same for this little text box. And there you go. Now the filter context of this thing is removed. Now this works for one page and one page alone, but in order to change the filter context of that, you have to turn the slicer back on, you modify the filter context, and if you ever want to update it. So let's make a, a, as a master page that'll help us manipulate this across this page and any other page in the report where their slicer might live. So let's turn the slicer back on. I'm gonna select the slicer and control C for copy. We're gonna to move to a new page called Master Slicer Control. Here I'm gonna control V the slicer. And you'll note right away it's saying, hey, do you wanna sync these visuals? Sure, we do. So if we hit sync on these visuals, you'll note that the same selection from the prior page is now shown here. Let's select two items, pants and shirts. And now we'll go back to our solution page. And you'll note here that everything is filtered the way we want. Now, we don't need this extra slicer hanging out on the page. Let's turn him off. And there we go. We have a filter context that's controlled by the master slicers. Selecting shirt and shoes. And you'll see our page has changed to only reveal those contexts. So anyone who was messing with this page can then adjust it here. Now, if we want to add this to a second page, same kind of scenario. Let's go to another page, solution number two. And in this case, we want to do the same thing. So we'll add the secondary slicer to this page. Zoom over to the master slicers. 
pick the slicer that you want to copy, control C, go back to page two, control V, and then again, the prompt will come up, do you want to sync this visual? Yes, we do, select sync, and now we'll see the visuals are slinked. Again, we don't need to have the second slicer on the page, so we'll unhide it. And now we have two pages maintaining the same filter context. Now also, you'll note here, we have this page called Master Slicers. Now, the reason I like this page here is often there'll be cases where your data changes and you'll get additional products in your data set. You may need to add or change or tweak how those things are looking based on data refreshes within your model. So um, for this case, I usually like to hide this page. That way people can't see it, yet I can still control everything that is on the filter context. And there we go. All right, hope you like the solution, guys. I'll catch you again soon. Thanks.